Wouldn't it be awesome if there was an electric powered snow train you could load up with all your heavy camping gear, drive it out through the snow while searching for the perfect spot to set up a high tech base camp with its own off grid power system to run all your electronics? I sure thought so, so I'm gonna make it. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you every single step of how this electric powered sled was built. Then we'll load it up with gear, drive it out through the snow, all to enjoy a windy winter night in a futuristic tent full of delicious foods, high tech fun, sweet treats, and more. And it all starts with a big old sled. And these sleds are fantastic. I've used them all the time in the past to haul all sorts of gear, but as they sit right now, they're not super easy to move on their own. So that's where these are gonna come in play. And these are some massive 48 volt thousand watt motors. And these are gonna be what's driving this thing. But with all that power, I feel like the sled's gonna be a bit flimsy because the sides are just made out of plastic. So I wanna actually make a little frame for them that I'm gonna make out of some wood. And I'm gonna be using these metal brackets to hold it all together, but I do need to modify them a bit. So I take them over to a vise clamp, get out my angle grinder, and I cut off all of the tops for them. I can then take the pieces of wood and lay them down on the ground just for ease of construction. Then I can take the metal brackets and place them on each of the corners, followed by putting in a whole bunch of screws all around it, making sure that the frame is nice and secure. I can then take the frame, flip it over the bottom of the sled, pushing it down and it fits super snug. I grab some clamps to hold the frame down to the sled so that I can flip the sled over and keep the frame from falling down. Now for the inner frame. I lay a couple more pieces of wood on the ground and using some more of those metal corner brackets, I build out a little structure, then I go ahead and put in some screws to hold it all in place. Then I can flip the thing over and it looks like a funny little table. For what's next, I actually wanna add this foam sealer. This is camper seal and all it is is just a roll of some adhesive back foam and I just wanna take it and place it all over the backside of the structure I just made for the frame and I even put some of it on the sides as well. Now I can take the padded inner frame, flip it over, and gently place it inside of the sled, and the thing fits like a glove. I ended up leaving out a couple of the screws and the metal braces, and that's so I could bend these pieces closer to the wall, because my next plan is, I actually want to drill through both of these 2x4s and bolt it all together. So I grab myself some clamps to squish them down to the wall, then I take out a really long drill bit, and I begin to drill through both of the pieces of 2x4 and the sled itself, I thread in a bolt through the hole, I place a washer, a lock nut, and a nut, and I go ahead and tighten it all down, securing it to the sled. Then it's just a matter of going up to all the other support beams and drilling and bolting those down nice and tight as well. Then I can head inside the frame and place in the last couple screws in the brackets. And there we have it. We have our inner frame and our outer frame securely bolted together through the sled, adding a lot of strength and rigidity to the whole structure. I feel a lot better now about attaching such large motors to the back of this thing. But before we get to the motors, I think this thing deserves a seat. And I found this really cool seat. It's sold as like a bleacher seat. I just liked it because it can fold super flat. So that means I can tuck it away when I place it inside the sled and it will just fold down and you won't even see it. And I think it's gonna be a really cool design. But we are gonna to have to modify the bottom of it a little bit by drilling out a couple holes. I place a block of wood underneath it just to prevent it from drilling through the fabric. And I go around and I drill in four holes throughout the sides. Then I take some lengths of wood and I drill in some holes that line up with the holes I drilled in the bottom of the seats so I can place them on the bottom and place in some bolts to hold it in place. Now our seats got a nice strong wood base so I can take it over inside of the sled, line it up with where I want it and take some long screws to firmly attach it down to the frame of the sled. Now we got our folding seat. The thing folds down nice and flat and it's on there super secure. And sitting on it, it's actually pretty comfy. I think it's gonna be pretty sweet sitting on this thing driving it around. For what's next, it's all about the motors. And these are honestly some super strong motors for how big they are. But the thing is, we actually have to open up this differential case and modify some of the gears on the inside. So I go ahead and lay them out on a towel because I know it's about to get messy and I remove all of the bolts holding the case together so I can crack it open, and you can see the minute it opens up, a bunch of gear oil spills out everywhere. But we still have to go deeper, so I go ahead and remove this bigger central gear from each of the differential cases, because what we want is actually inside of here. And these are just held together by some machine screws, so I go ahead and unscrew them and gently tap off the top of them, revealing all of the grease and gears on the inside. And I do my best to clean off all the grease, because we're not gonna need that anymore, 
because for this next step, you can see these gears spin freely and I actually want to lock these differentials down. So I have to take out my little flux core welder and begin to weld all the gears inside to stop them from actually rotating. And after a little bit of welding, we lock those gears right up. So I could go ahead and place back on the tops, bolt them back down. Then I could set them back inside of the differential case, making sure they still spin freely and gently close them up, placing all of the bolts. And since I did leak out all of the oil, I go ahead and remove the oil nut so I could squeeze in some more of the gear oil and close it on up. And now we have both of our modified motors with our lock differentials, which are going to be perfect for how we're going to use them. I want to be able to bolt these differentials together to form one axle, so I'm going to be modifying some black pipe flanges and a small piece of pipe. Using one of the gaskets for the differential, I use it as a guide so I can mark some places on the pipe flange, so I can take it over to a vice clamp and take a pretty serious duty drill and drill some holes in it where I just marked. I can then take the modified flanges and screw them together to the pipe, lining them up. Then I take my little flux core welder and weld all around the seams, making sure this thing will never come apart. And after a couple welds, the thing was nice and solid, but I wanted to give it a little bit of protection from the elements, so I just grabbed myself some generic yellow spray paint and gave it a quick little coating. And now we have ourselves a nice solid way to connect our motors together. But before I actually connect them, I want to make a little gasket out of tape just to prevent any debris and stuff from falling inside the motors. Then I can go ahead and place the bolts through the holes I drilled, tighten it up for the differential. Then I go ahead and slide the other one in place and attach that one just the same. Time to install the axles. And these are super easy to install. You just take the gasket that came with it, you slot the axle into place, and just attach it with some bolts. And I went ahead and did it to both of the sides. Let's get this rolling. I got myself these two really large tires, which I think are going to be good to getting this thing through all the snow. And I'm going to be installing them on the axle right now, just because it's going to be easier to build the rest of the cart when this thing has some wheels on it. Now we have our axle with our two motors independently controlling each of the tires, and it's also super heavy duty. Now for attaching it to the back of the sled. I build a small little wooden frame that I hold together with some screws and on the other side I drill out some holes that line up with the holes on the axles so I can hold up the piece of wood to it, put in some bolts and tighten it all down. I then layer up a couple 2x4s on the bottom section screwing them all in place to keep it nice and secure. So now when I tip it down it has a nice little shelf on it which is exactly what we want. I then head over to the back of the sled and attach a 2x4 on the back side as well. Now I can go ahead and roll up the wheels, set down the shelf, and I can pick up the back of the sled and set it on top. Then I hold it in place temporarily with some clamps so I can take some bolts and attach it together. But first, I have to measure the depth and mark a few places with a marker, then take a really long drill bit, drill through the sled and all of the 2x4s. Then I can feed in all of the bolts to the holes I just drilled. And instead of using regular nuts, I'm using these nuts with spiky bits so I can take them and place them where the bolts are going to poke out. And when I tighten them down, you can see that the teeth actually grip into the wood for a super secure connection. So I go ahead and tighten down all the other bolts as well. And now we have our motors and our wheels securely attached to the back of the sled. And if you see, I left a little gap underneath it so that the bottom will never actually bottom out. Even though we have our motors on there now, we still don't have a way to control them. So that's what we got to figure out next. And for that, we're going to need a couple of these, some brushless motor controllers. These are each rated for 48 volts and 1000 watts, which is perfect for our motors. We're also going to need some throttles for our motor. So that's where these two things come in. Just some nice thumb throttles. And I also want a set of switches for the forward and reverse for each of the motors. And since I'm going to have this thing driving around through the snow, I want to put all of the electronics inside of this nice little watertight container. The first thing to tackle is how we're going to mount this little waterproof box. I attach a small block of wood to the back of the sled. Then I take a longer piece of 2x4 and I lay it on top of it and affix it down in place with some screws as well. Then I grab two smaller pieces of wood and attach those to the top. And now we have a perfect little place for our electronic box to sit. But before we can go ahead and stick it in place, we actually have to modify it a bit. Because I want to install some of these cable glands, so I have a nice weatherproof way to get some wires in and out. I grab the box, I measure and mark a few places, so I can take a pretty big drill bit and drill out all the holes we're going to need for the cable glands. Then I can go ahead and install them in all the holes. There's still one more hole I need to drill in this box, and that's going to be for the switch that's going to turn on and off our motors. 
I line it up, I drill out the hole, and I test fit it in place. But before I install it in place, I want to attach this small little block of wood to the corner here. And I'm going to be using this special tape called Alien Tape, which is like a thick sticky tape. And I put it on the side in the bottom and then I stick it in place. Then I head to the outside where I put in a couple screws through the plastic, the tape, and into the wood. And the tape should keep out any moisture from coming in. And the reason for the wood inside the box is so I can screw down these little bus bars in place. And now to install our power switch. I'm gonna take some two-part epoxy, mix it up, I place it all around the outside of the switch, and I pop it in place and put on the nut on the other side to tighten it down. We can now take our little electric box, flip it over, and on the back side, I'm gonna build up a couple layers of the alien tape beneath the feet, just so that they're thicker than the feet themselves, so that I can take the box and gently place it on top of the little stand we made in the back of the vehicle. I can then open it on up, take a couple screws, and screw it in through the plastic, the tape, and into the wood underneath for a nice weatherproof seal that's going to secure the box in place. On to the motor controllers. The first step I'm going to do is I want to take some of this 10 gauge wire to extend the power wires on both of the controllers. And for all the other wiring, I have this special wire right here. And what makes it special is it actually has 10 conductors inside of it. Because that's perfect, we're going to need 5 for each of the controllers. To make it a little bit easier on myself, I begin to label the motor controllers right and left, and I write up a little cheat sheet that's going to tell me what each of the wire signals is going to be. And to make it even easier on myself, I decided to use these self-soldering heat shrink tubings to do all of the wiring for the small stuff, which is super nice because it gives a nice clean solder job with just using a heat gun. And just like that, all of our signal wires for our controllers are all wired up, and it all comes out a nice convenient single wire. Now we can take our motor controllers, slap them inside of our little box, and I'm going to take a couple short screws and screw them in through that plastic, the tape, and into the wood underneath to keep them nice and secure when we're driving this thing around. Next up, time to connect up the three phase wires for the motor's power with some crimps and some heat shrink tubing, and a couple minutes later, they were both connected up. Now we can take our hall sensor wires and just plug them into the motor controllers, and they just easily snap into place. I then take the wire for our controls and I feed it through one of the cable glands in the front. For the other two cable gland holes, I feed in the positive wire and the negative wire. I take the positive wire over to the switch I glued in the wall and I begin to attach it and this is just going to be so I can turn the power on and off to both of the motor controllers. I then connect up all of the positive wires from the controllers and tighten them down to the terminal block. Then I do the same to the negative wires, tightening it all down for some really nice clean wire management. With the wiring done inside of our nice little electronic box, we can go ahead and snap it closed. And I'm really pleased with how this box turned out. We got the switch, we got the power going to the motors, and on the front, we have the positive and negative wires that'll hook up to our battery. And we also have the wire for our controller. So let's go ahead and hook that up now. For the controller for this thing, I wanted to do something super simple. So I got a piece of this tubing. It's made for like a bike. And all of the controls that I got for this all fit on this tubing perfectly. So all you have to do is really just slide them into place. Then you just take an Allen key to tighten them all down to keep them from sliding around. Now it's time to take that 10 conductor wire, take that little cheat sheet that I wrote up earlier so I know what each color does, and begin to connect it all to the controls. And again, I'm using those super simple heat shrink tubing connectors just to make it a super easy job. Then I take a large piece of heat shrink tubing and I slide it over the whole thing and give it some extra heat to really make it permanent. To give the wire some more strength, I'm going to be covering it up with some of this split tubing. I'm going to run it from the back of the motor controllers all the way up to the front controller. Then I take some yellow electrical tape just to wrap it around the first couple inches on the front just to keep it from coming undone. Then I head over to the back and wrap it up around there as well. Now we have our super simple controller finished. It's got throttles for each of the wheels and it's got forward and reverse for each of them as well. Awesome. Now that we have our controls done, we're going to need something to power it all. So that's where Bob comes in or a big old battery. This is a massive 48 volt 100 amp hour battery by EnjoyBot. And this thing has powered so many of my projects, but I don't want to just have it sloshing around in the back. So I'm going to be making a container for it and we are going to have to modify it a bit with some cable glands, a power switch, and also a whole bunch of wire. I begin by tipping it on its side, measuring and marking a few places, then taking out the drill and drilling out some holes that are going to be for the cable glands. Then I drill one more hole that's going to be for the on and off switch. 
And just like the other one, I'm going to take some two-part epoxy, place it all around the rim, and glue it firmly in place. I can then take the cable glands and install them in the other holes I drilled in the box. I take a flat sheet of foam and I cut out a piece that fits perfectly in the bottom of the box so I can take the massive battery and when I drop it down, it's going to have a little bit of cushion when I'm driving this thing around. And for what's going on top of the battery, I'm going to make a little brace out of some wood and a couple screws. And the reason I'm making this part is so I can bring this out with me. And that is my nice little 800 watt inverter so we can have some power with us when we're out there on the go. After I screwed it down in place, we can pick up the whole thing and bring it over and place it on top of the battery. And the shape of the wood support is going to keep it from sliding around. In order to get power out from the inverter, we're going to need to install this cord. Sadly, it doesn't fit through the cable gland hole, so I do have to cut the cord in half. Then I can feed it through the hole and reassemble it back on the outside. The switch that I installed in this box is going to be used for turning on and off the inverter from the outside. So I go ahead and wire up the positive wire, tighten it down. Then I take the leads and tighten them down to the back of the inverter. Now we can take the power cord running through the box and plug it in the front. And now we have ourselves a nice little battery inverter combo that we can go ahead, turn on the switch, and we'll have ourselves 120 volt AC whenever we're out there. Super cool. I plan on installing the battery box combo in the back of the sled right here, but I want to increase the support a little bit by adding this piece of wood, and I take a bunch of screws to screw it down to the frame of the sled itself. I can then take the massive battery box combo, lift it up, and place it gently on top of the wood support I just put down there. Now it's as simple as running the positive one negative wire through the cable glands in the back, crimping on some lug terminals, and then just attaching them to the battery terminals themselves. Now we can take the lid for the container, snap it down on top, and we have ourselves a nice sealed battery and inverter. To keep the battery in place when driving, I have some of these hooks that I'm going to go around to each side on the frame, put in a couple screws to hold them in place, then I can take a ratchet strap, hooking it on each of the hooks and tightening it down to keep the battery from jumping around when we're moving. I also decided to get a couple handles that I want to drill and bolt through the frame on the front. Just in case I ever want to move this thing, it'll just be a little bit easier. And I installed one on each of the sides. With the main sled complete, the only thing left to do is to modify the two other sleds for the train. And this is going to be super simple. All I'm doing is just drilling a hole in each of the corners. Then I'm going to take some heavy duty paracord, thread it through each of the holes, bring it around to the front, and tie a nice strong knot. And that's it. Each of our sled has a nice strong rope to be towed by, and on the back of it, there's an extra rope on top, so I can hook them all together with some carabiners to form the train. With our snow train complete, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to take it out for a night of some fun. Let's go. Well, we made it out here. The little snow train sled thing held up beautifully. You can see I pulled two extremely heavy snow carts behind it. And actually it looks like uh, I lost a ratchet strap somewhere. <laughs> I'll find that tomorrow morning probably. Oh, my poor mattress is wet. The tires kicked up dirt trying to get out here. <laughs> it's all over my backpack. 
<laughs> no, that's all right. But yeah, this looks like a nice spot. We got the lake over here. You can see some cattails, some nice fresh snow on the ground. It's time to unclip all of the little carts and set up my massive, massive tent. The thing's pretty sweet and I'm excited to show you it. And then unclip the little snow sleds. Moved a little sled out of the way. You can see these tires, they just eat up the ground. And there's a lot of weight on the, the back of the sled, especially when I'm sitting here. And plus the battery and inverter right here, which is pretty heavy itself, maybe around 100 pounds, I'm guessing. Let's uh, begin to set up our tent. Can't believe I lost a, a ratchet strap. At least I didn't lose the table. I kind of forgot a hammer. All right, we got our massive tent set up, got all my gear inside. I still got to kind of organize in there. But first, before we get inside the tent, I brought a long extension cord and I had my inverter in my little sled train thing. Reach in here, plug it in, and we can hit the switch. Yeah, you can see it's glowing. I don't know if you can see that. And then this, we'll just kind of tuck away. Then we'll take the rest of the cord and feed it in through this little slot right here. And now we'll have some power for our tent adventures tonight. Well, we made it out here. This thing is absolutely awesome. It's got windows all around, which I'm probably going to be opening it up momentarily just to get some light in here because this thing is completely black when you close all the windows and doors. Look how big this tent is. <laughs> this is unreal. I've never used a tent like this before. I have like a full size table in here, like a big old cot. So much extra room for some cool stuff I have planned later. But I did notice, I did bring my little buddy heater, but sadly I had it facing upwards and the tires was spraying dirt all inside of this like ceramic grill. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use this thing. <laughs> it was just filled of grass and frozen dirt. Uh, what can you do? But I mean, hey, we still got out here. And if you can see over here, we have uh, power coming in right here. So 120 volt AC. We're able to run a whole bunch of goodies and stuff tonight. And it's supposed to be kind of windy later. Maybe gusts of 40 miles an hour. So it'll be a good test of this tent. But I did stake down all of like the corner points with its own stake and ratcheted it nice and tight. So we should be good to go. All right, so I cleaned off the heater as best as I could, and I'm just turning it on high to burn off any of that like dirt and mud. And you can see a bunch of little stuff is like burning on there. So hopefully after about five minutes, it's gonna burn everything off and just be ready for tonight. There we go. It's looking a lot better right now. I think I am actually gonna be using this tonight because I wasn't sure if I just completely ruined uh, the ceramic, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who's gotten like dirt and debris inside of it. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that wind, but it's starting to get pretty windy outside. I'm glad I got the tent up now. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been really hard to get it up with all this wind. Look how roomy it is in here. It's like a studio apartment or something. Tent's all set up. 
and now I'm honestly pretty hungry and I got something delicious planned for dinner and that is some fresh basil pesto that's right got basil garlic some pine nuts some olive oil and I'm just remembering that I forgot to grab parmesan and I forgot some salt <laughs> Actually, there might be some salt. I brought an MRE. I always bring in an MRE just in case like I completely destroy my dinner. It's good to have just backup food. Look at that. Iodized salt. Very cool. And I'm going to be having the pesto with some gnocchi. Some delicious pesto gnocchi for dinner. But you're probably wondering how I'm going to make this pesto. Aha, well let me tell you. I brought a food processor. Let's make some delicious pesto. Uh, you can hear that wind is crazy out there. Gonna need a couple cloves. Oh, just exploded everywhere. A couple cloves of garlic. And I can take the little food processor, plug it in. <laughs> crazy. Basil. And I took off all the stems last night. Man, it is windy out there. I don't know if you can hear that. Toss in the garlic and then some pine nuts cap this thing, give it a little spin, then we'll add in some oil. Alright, then we'll take our little salt from our MRE, sprinkle it in, maybe that's a little too much, <laughs> and we'll hit it a few more times. Look at this, that is some pesto if I've seen it. Ooh, this is going to be so good. And I also brought my little electric hot plate, which is going to go perfectly with our inverter. I also brought a watt meter and plug in our stove and turn this thing on. We're drawing right around 713 watts. We're going to be cooking our food off of our inverter from our little sled thing. Alright, in the meantime, while we got our little hot plate to boil our water, I think I am actually going to be turning on my little buddy heater. And I do have a little gas meter right here. We'll go off if there's any bad levels of carbon monoxide. But I just want this place to warm up a little bit. There we go. Get some heat coming off of that. I mean, I don't know if you can hear that wind. It is absolutely crazy outside. I can just see my zippers dancing a little bit. But I mean, this tent is holding up like a champ. I mean, it's super rugged. <laughs> I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and zip up these windows. It's gonna keep the heat in here and get this giant room nice and warm. <sighs> Man, with the windows closed in here, it's like pitch black. Toss the lantern there. Something I completely forgot to mention earlier is driving this thing over here, I used about 5% of the battery, maybe 6% of the battery. I'm at 92%. I've had on this inverter for a couple minutes now, so it's probably eaten up a couple percentage. And I did use that little food processor. But honestly, having the two motors was pretty efficient. I thought I would have probably used maybe 25% of the battery, but not even close. And it was pulling a lot of weight. It pulled all of this gear out here and myself and the big old battery. We're doing really well. So Nothing to worry about on the battery status. Super happy about that. Just a couple more minutes now. Tuna, there we go. Some fresh pesto and gnocchi, and some tuna. Oh, that is good. And I got some nice tuna.
this fresh pesto, fantastic. And I'm super happy that I had the salt from the MRE. It's definitely, definitely needed it. <laughs> can see it's pretty warm in here right now it was a nice snowy morning getting out here driving the little train of sleds out here it was a lot of fun and it managed to pull those sleds out here no problem at all and I had hundreds and hundreds of pounds of weight <laughs> pulling on this and it was pretty efficient I expected to use like a quarter of the battery to get out here especially since I was pushing the motors pretty hard but I guess it wasn't really being pushed that hard because I only used like five percent I went pretty far to be honest which was nice to find out so I just have more power to do things tonight and not have to worry about getting back or anything in the morning if you never had gnocchi, definitely try it. This tent is honestly awesome. I had my eye on it for a long time, and this is the first time I've ever used it. I set it up just the other day to make sure I knew how to set it up. It is so big. It is like a, it's like a little cabin or something. I absolutely love it. Crazy windy out there. This is so good. This is so good. It's always a lot of fun to build these projects and make these projects and just try things that I've always wanted to try. And I think it turned out really well. I think turning the jet sled into like a little motorized thing was a lot of fun. I like how it has a seat on it. I can just drive it around. And it steered pretty decent even when pulling all of that gear. I was able to kind of do some snakes through the, some of the path which was really nice because you never really know how something's going to work until you take it out. And I think it worked really well. As I'm finishing up my dinner, I remembered I brought a thermos of hot water and I got some tea. This is some licorice spice tea. <sighs> Cheers. What a wonderful dinner. I just finished up dinner. It was fantastic. Still got some hot tea left. And also I brought something pretty cool that I want to share with y'all and that is a projector. That's right. I ended up bringing myself a nice little portable projector. The first time I set up this tent and I stepped inside of it, it was just so dark in here and it made me think of like a movie theater. So I thought this would be a perfect time to use a little projector like this. I also brought myself a big old projector screen and stand and we're going to set that up and just enjoy watching some movies, playing some games on this crazy cold windy night in this massive tent. Let's have some fun. Now we can go ahead and turn on our little projector. This is a little portable one and I just gotta line it up with the screen and we'll have ourselves a nice little projector. And of course I brought a steam deck so we're gonna go ahead and dock it to the projector. I also have myself a little controller so let's go ahead and play some games. This is crazy. Ah. I think it's time to watch a movie. And what goes good with a movie other than some popcorn? So I got myself some kernels of popcorn, a little pot, hot plate. A little bit of oil. Never done this before, just kind of guessing. Ooh, I heard a pop. Ooh. Oh, the, oh goodness. Should we peek? Oh, is she going crazy? Oh my, too much. I can't hold it. Oh no. Oh my goodness. All right, is that good? Well, <laughs> we made some popcorn. Oh. Well, that was my first time making it in a little pan like that. It worked really well, super easy. Mm. I opened up the window for a minute just because I think the popcorn made a little bit of smoke in here and I want to clean it out. There's still like maybe a half hour left of sunlight out there, but it's getting later. Popcorn turned out really well though. Opening up those windows though made it quite cold in here. I'm gonna have to turn this thing on high in a minute once I close it. It is windy out there. 
No joke. This is nice, just snacking on some popcorn. Got my heater right there, the projector going, about to watch a movie. <laughs> just a really nice night. It's still crazy windy out there though, but it doesn't affect the tent really much at all, so can't complain at all. I'm watching The Fifth Element. It's a fantastic movie. We must drink a lot of coffee to get free, huh? It's time for a sweet treat. And what I have planned is, I brought one of these. If you've never seen one of these, uh, they're pretty cool. You usually do them over like a campfire, but I don't really have a campfire in here. But I also did bring tiny little stove, little isobutane stove. For what this thing actually is, we've always called them hobo pie makers. And you open it up, and you see it's got like a clamshell design. Take like bread, you put two pieces of bread, and then you have all sorts of different fillings. I'm sure you can find all sorts of recipes. I remember making uh, like pizzas when I was young with just like cheese pepperoni and like pizza sauce and some bread you close it up and then you go over the campfire cook it comes out like a nice little like hot pocket of pizza you can also do sweet things which i plan on doing today because i have some just like white bread chocolate and marshmallows so we're gonna make ourselves a nice little toasty s'more thing over our little stove <laughs> some of my bread got a little bit squished in the ride over here we're gonna end up using two pieces take a chocolate bar and then some marshmallows. You go ahead and lock it, and then we just cook this thing. All right, let's check this thing out. Look at that, toasted to perfection. We got our toasted little s'more sandwich thing. I've never done it over a little stove like that. I've always done it over a campfire. Let's give it a try. <laughs> oh, it's so hot. It's like a little s'more sandwich. <laughs> nice little treat. It is still crazy windy out there. Cheers. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. I'm a dog. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> it is time to set up the sleeping situation. I also ended up bringing an electric heated blanket to keep myself nice and toasty warm all night long. Got my heated blanket on to full blast. You can see I got some YouTube on in the background. Just gonna watch some videos and relax before I get some sleep in a couple minutes. It's been a wonderful day. And this is a, such a crazy setup. So much fun. I guess you can see my breath a bit. I turned off my little buddy heater a while ago and it started to cool down in here a bit but I'm nice and toasty warm in my sleeping bag and I have my heated blanket on. My battery's at like 80% right now so we only used about 20% all day till right now from driving out here cooking dinner cooking the popcorn the steam deck the projector all that stuff so we're doing fantastic it's comforting to know I don't have to worry about energy or power of the battery. I am tired it's been a long day and a good day a lot of fun on this adventure so far and it's really fun to bring the projector out of here that thing is just crazy it's like a movie theater in this tent i find it so much fun yeah i am tired and ready to catch some sleep so get some good sleep and i'll see y'all in the morning calm out today good morning it's early it's pretty cold I opened up a couple windows because it's just so dark in here you'd never even know that the Sun came up and if you look at the ceiling you can see that 
this little ice crystals frozen all over it just from my breath <laughs> it looks cool but man i'm gonna have to let this tent thaw and dry out it's just all over the walls <laughs> what a weird thing it's like 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little bit of a chilly morning, so I want to go ahead and turn on my little heater. Let's get this thing going. There we go. It'll probably melt all the sparkles, the water crystals. Ah, uh, the heater feels so good. I also used my heated blanket like all night long, and right now I'm at like 66% battery. So we used a good little chunk of battery last night, just keeping myself nice and toasty warm. The roof and everything is already starting to melt and it's dropping little drips everywhere. <laughs> There's just so much moisture from me breathing, I guess, last night. And probably cooking all that food. Let's go around and open up some of these other windows. Get some light in here. There we go. Woo! And it's starting to feel nice and toasty in here. Ah, <sighs> look at that. Got nice views from the windows, got the little heater on. <laughs> Still got my big protractor screen up. I did end up putting away the projector just so it wouldn't like freeze or get moisture on it in the night or something. It's a cold morning. It's 27 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now and I'm starting to get hungry and ready for some breakfast. And for breakfast, I brought my little waffle maker. So we're gonna go ahead and make ourselves some little miniature Belgian waffles. I'm also gonna warm up my gloves a bit. They seem a little frozen. So I'll just keep them by the heater as we make our breakfast. Got some waffle mix. This thing is warmed up. And we'll have a waffle in a couple minutes. Cooking my gloves over here as well. <laughs> Make sure to flip them. <laughs> it's just a, a nice calm morning. A lot nicer than all that crazy wind we had last night. That was nuts. There we go. A nice, fresh, steaming waffle. You can see the steam from the waffle. Woo! It's like it's on fire. I'm just gonna go ahead and eat these as they come because because they're warm. To no surprise, I forgot to bring any honey or anything like that. Oh well, just some fresh baked waffles for breakfast. I was thinking of having some hot tea with my waffles, but I found my tea cup from last night and it is just frozen in here. Yeah, so maybe no tea this morning. I honestly had a lot of fun on this adventure from building the sled to driving it out here and setting up this crazy massive tent. But I hope you enjoy this adventure with me as well. I'm just gonna finish up my breakfast now, hang out for a little bit, then it's gonna be time to pack up camp. The last bite. Um. Let my little waffle maker cool down. And for the battery status, we are at 64% battery. And I've had on this heated blanket for probably like 12 hours going on a little more than that. Not even at the halfway point. So we're definitely gonna have enough juice to drive on back and not even have to worry about it. It's time to warm up my socks a bit. I forgot to put them in my sleeping bag last night and they're gonna be like putting on icicles. So let's get those boys warm. You can see out there, just a nice calm day. All right. It's time to start to clean up camp. All right, got everything pretty much packed up. I still got my little heater on, just warming up my little space bubble right now. Yeah, this tent is massive. Without the big screen and the bed, everything is just huge. I'm just gonna hang out for a couple minutes, relax, sit in my chair before I go ahead, pack it up, then begin to start to load up the sleds, then drive the sleds on back home. It's honestly been a wonderful adventure, and this is such a cool tent. I've had so much fun in it. All right, turn off our little heater. We can poke outside you can see our sled is still there <laughs> which is good and we still have a little bit of snow left but a lot of it melted it warmed up then it got super cold <laughs> my 
might as well go ahead and turn off the inverter. There we go, plug the inverter. Nice bit of frost on everything. <laughs> now I can begin to start to load up my sleds. Time to take it down. Well, I got the camp loaded up. I'm just sitting on my little motorized sled snow train thing and I'm ready to head on back home. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you just had fun or enjoyed the journey with me as well. And I wanna say thanks for stopping by everybody and I'll catch you on the next one. Till next time. Look at this. I found the missing ratchet strap. Nice. Fine, here it is. A little speed test. This thing gets going.